Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, welcome and I'm saying congratulations because you've been in history. Yeah, uh, this is the most legendary uh, my interview because it's in English language and for the start uh, I must thank you, you touching this video and I have one special guest but I must uh, excuse my language because I'm not born in the England and my English is not really good but I'm doing my best. I chose this language because I wanted sharing story to the world, his story, travel story. I'm really honored he is uh, today in my interview and also in my home. <laughs> When we starting I'm saying one one backstory. I meet this guy on 26 September. His journey, his unbelievable journey, our inspiration, you listen this story, uh, starting one day before with 25 September. I meet him in uh, the highest Alpine road in uh, Austrian Alps in Glossglockner. but down in the borders of the uh, Alpine road. But he been back on the me. I have this Suzuki Wisdom 800 DE. I doing 14 counties without the highways in just eight days. And then I think where I go, I go to mountains because I really love it. And I really recommend it. Vincent been uh, behind me and I with my luggage, aluminum luggage have a reflexing tape because safer is really important for me. And he think, Maybe I am cab, but when he uh, see me, when I going for full line and eat buzz in the corner, he know I am definitely not a cab. And when we starting uh, stopping together in the border, or when you can buy a ticket and go to Glossglockner Alpine Pass, we travelers are all friendly and uh, and doesn't matter which motorcycle and brand you have, we are all friendly. We are together. We are community. For this reason, we are making this legendary video today and I say Vincent you wanted a photo and he say yes and I making him photo and he putting on his profile and have all unbelievable journey and for this day have in pro profile this picture and we make a friend a be in contact and I show you this picture now uh, which I doing this day what is magical like I start We meet first time one day after he starting unbelievable trip. And now is one day when he ending. Tomorrow he ending is like a like a something special. It's something miracle. One day before, one day uh, before end and start and is this day. Thank you very much Vincent. It's re really honored me uh, to present you and express unbelievable travel Vincent Reiser, yes, yes, is good. Right, yes, <laughs> is uh, from Germany. He say you, but now I show you his Instagram and his profile. You go there and make a follow to see every videos, every photos with unbelievable trip, and also give subscribe this channel and support this 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 project to give travelers and and motorcycle. Uh, this topic, this, this this interview. Thank you very much. And uh, first question: <laughs> Who is? And thank you very much. You are here. <laughs> yeah. Also, we have uh, uh, another so guest. <laughs> yes, of course. You know, this been really democracy interview. Uh, first question: Who is Vincent Reiser? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me and for the invitation. Uh, staying here one night at your home. Yes, of course. Uh, it's no very problem. beautiful here. Outside, uh, here's nothing around. It's very quiet. A uh, big garden. And uh, yes. Um, yeah. Who am I? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I'm a. What, what to say? Like uh, I'm a typical German. <laughs> I'm 27 years old. 
and I was traveling almost one year now with my motorcycle uh, around um, uh, like Asia, like Central Asia, Southeast Asia. Yeah. Yes. Like and, and when you starting, you have 26 years old. Yes, I started with 26 years old and I turned 27 in May when I was a uh, I was at the beach in Thailand, actually. Oh, bravo! Re yes. Really good place for birthday. <laughs> yes. And uh, I have some tech ears because, like I starting uh, this interview, my English is not really good for this reason. Again, really uh, excuse my English. But when did you become interesting in motorcycles? And what was your first motorcycle? Um, that's a good question. I become interested in motorcycles. I think I was 19 years old, something like that. Okay. I was, actually, I wasn't interested in motorcycles at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I was more interested in cars. I had an old Mercedes, which I was like uh, fixing all the time. Okay. So uh, I was also always interested in uh, mechanical stuff, like fixing stuff. Okay. And then there was a point where me and my two other brothers, um, we wanted to do the driver's license for motorbike, okay. and they ta they they kind of uh, talked me into that because I wasn't. I, I didn't have any money. I was in this school at this time and yeah, like my car was yes, really expensive. And so we started uh, going to the driver's license lessons and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one who finished it, actually. Really? <laughs> and, yes. and these guys know? No, my brothers didn't finish it. Uh, and, and now have this license? Or uh, one know? of them haven't and the other one didn't okay. uh, finish it. And once I had my license, um, I still wasn't into motorbikes. I just make made it to like have it you know <laughs> kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then there was like opportunity uh, from a friend of a friend he was like oh i have this old bmw maybe you want to buy it because i know you just uh, uh, finished we're your... talking about this motorcycle no no it's like the same engine uh it was a model year 1994 i think mm -hmm. but it was a street version it was oh, a okay. rt which yes, means of course. like road and travel i think from bmw and he sent me a picture and I was like shocked because it was such an ugly bike. It, it has like a big <laughs> fairing and yeah. like small handlebars and like uh, big uh, plastic boxes. And I was like, why do you think I want to buy this kind of bike? Like I was, I don't know, I was like 19, 20 years old. And, and I was like, no, I won't buy this and I don't even have money. And, mm. and then I, when I was home, I just... Uh, just went to Google and entered like BMW R80 RT and the first pictures who showed up were like uh, modified ones like uh, Coffee Racer or mm -hmm. like Bobber and I was like no way this is the same bike yeah uh, I was so shocked because uh, these bikes like suddenly looked really beautiful and I was like okay maybe I should think about it and I started like googling and stuff and I ended up buying this bike actually uh -huh. from him this is my fifth bike actually <laughs> ah, fifth bike and and, yeah. and and when when coming this moment when you say okay this is for street or road i want a little off road or yeah, sh shortly <laughs> shortly before uh no shortly after i finished this cafe racer uh, rebuild of the first bmw i had i rode it a lot on roads and was really fun and then i started to like i don't know how Actually, I can't remember, but I started to going like off-road and then I had the opportunity to buy an old uh, 1100 GS, which is the later model of this one mm -hmm. from a colleague well, yes, at work, mm -hmm. like it uh, was really cheap and nothing special. Yes, and course. I bought it off him, like pretty cheap. And at this point I had the idea, I was like um, in my apprenticeship, I, I learned uh, like mechanic, industrial mechanic. Mm -hmm. And then this like the first i saw the first videos and like uh stories of people who was who who've been traveling the world with the bike mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is the moment when you've been thinking about traveling yes and i for that reason i bought this bike when when you're looking these guys he traveling mm -hmm. what you interesting about this um like the interesting part of it was i think the fact that they've been traveling like for one year or two years or like a long time but just have like small luggage like everything they need and not more 
mm -hmm. and just having that and going around the world and see all the like cultures the countries and meet that many people yes of course and reaching places like especially with a bike off-road mm -hmm. uh, reaching places you can't reach with a car and uh, and normal this, bike yeah. yeah and this really uh, yeah turns me into that and, and, and say me and and in this moment you're saying okay you find this bike and you modification some no at this point i didn't have this bike oh, okay no, so no i had i had the 1100 gs okay and i started to take it off-road and realize in germany in germany yeah and and france also mm -hmm. and pretty fast i realized this bike is not made for off-road because i break everything yeah you know? understand i i also doing <laughs> off-road with a hornet second yeah, and i'm yeah. doing uh, crazy <laughs> things but say me one thing when you start traveling uh we coming for this big road this yeah. big adventure uh, but uh you you traveling before this you have some trips yeah with the street bike actually i went yeah, to berlin meet uh, some friends from school uh, they moved to berlin i visit them there and i did like a tour in Eastern Germany but no huge traveling around no really. just like a few weeks ah, like okay, in holidays. okay. No, not, no, not not like big. this no, 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 no. <laughs> okay this is different <laughs> we, we, we come coming uh, how many kilometers have your bike now now it's uh, 61,000 and before I restored it it had 100,000 so it like the engine and the gearbox has like 161,000 now. Oh, great! Wow, yeah. <laughs> a really beautiful score, eh? really, really beautiful score. Eh? And how much countries this motorcycle passed away? Um, 32 should be now. Bravo, Vincent, bravo, Vincent. <laughs> yes. and and you know many motorcycle uh, riders and travelers making a lot of um, countries but you must thinking about this not every country is small and with Europe is really uh, easy to make a, a lot, lot of countries a lot yeah. of countries <laughs> but uh, my friend here uh, being in countries is really really huge and for yeah. this reason this this I know this uh, number of countries is really really huge uh, tell us your uh, incredible adventure that you have now how many days you been in the road and I need to check for that because I'm not uh, it's like almost one year um, it's 323 days oh well exactly <laughs> and, and how much this uh, country is you making in uh, this uh, trip? it's like 29 29? 28 29 yeah and how much kilometers plus uh, minus 52000 thousand yeah <laughs> 52000 kilometers with like uh, we have one year uh, one month yeah. yes uh, less than one year uh, yeah uh, uh, 52000 kilometers he not been in home yes. and he <laughs> starting okay we are here. We <laughs> yes. go, go. We starting. One day, with 25 September, you uh, in the morning, you jumping in the motorcycle and you start go yes. your trip. <laughs> How you planning your uh, trip and which countries you doing and talking, talking, Vincent? Yeah, planning is actually a pretty small. Uh, like I, I, I spend a pretty small time on planning because uh, my goal was just to start and see how it goes like I had uh, a rough plan like my my goal was like one year plus minus like uh, depends on how, how I like it and mm -hmm. because I don't want to say I go one year and if I don't like it I need to go one year because that's stupid I think and so roughly I had one year and first when I started I thought about going uh, all the way to Australia yeah and from Australia Same. to South America and then back to Germany but turns out I was traveling way s slower than expected which was good yes and of course. so I think it was when I was in Iran I realized that it's not possible for me to go all the way to to Australia and South America yes, like money wise and time wise so um, I changed the plans a little bit and <laughs> I went down to the Emirates and uh, went through Oman also mm -hmm. and then I uh, had the problem uh, going further like there were two options going back to Iran and then uh, Pakistan um, India and all the way to Southeast Asia mm -hmm. but one big problem is there is no way between India or like Bangladesh to um, okay to um, 
Thailand. Okay. Because there's Myanmar and it's war. Okay, you ready? How it is? <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> you can um, uh, present all these countries how how coming, starting in Germany, then yes. coming Austria, yes. and then uh, Slovenia, then uh, it was Croatia, then it was Bosnia, then it was uh, Montenegro, then it was no North Macedonia, oh, North, North, North Macedonia. Macedonia. Then I went to Kosovo. There I met uh, um, two other guys. We rode around for one week. And from there I went to Greece, Turkey, um, Georgia, back to Turkey, Iran, then uh, Emirates, uh, Oman, from Oman back to the Emirates. I sent a bike to Thailand, from Thailand to Laos, then back to Thailand, from <laughs> Thailand to... Um, um, yeah, it's difficult Nepal. because... It's <laughs> okay. From Nepal to India, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kazakhstan, <laughs> Russia, <laughs> then Kazakhstan, no, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, Russia, sorry, and then Georgia, Turkey, and from Turkey I went to Bulgaria, then Romania, and I'm then from oh, Romania to uh, Hungary, uh, Hungary today, yeah. and yeah, and then it's Austria and then Germany. <laughs> and, and, and finish the finish the this journey, finish the trip. Yes, 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 tomorrow Unbelievable. I will be at home, hopefully. Vincent, that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Did you prepare for this unbelievable journey some special bike or you or yes actually I built this bike for this journey like to finish the the first question about the bikes mm -hmm. when I started with the 1100 GS I realized it's not made for off-roading then at the same time Corona starts so <laughs> I just throw all the plans out of the window because uh, I realized it's not possible now yeah and at that point the and you want, want it early Starting. Yeah, I wanted di directly after my apprenticeship, I wanted to start. Okay. But problem one was I didn't have any money. And the bike <laughs> That's was... really important. <laughs> and the bike was like, a lo lot of parts were broken because okay. of the off-roading. And yeah, once, once I was finished with my apprenticeship, uh, like a few days after the Corona shit starts. Mm, yeah. And so I made the plan to start working for like two years and save some money and then start. Mm. And have some special equipment here for your traveling, or is only basic luggage and you just go? Yeah, it's well, I prepared like it's like a tent, sleeping bag, like camping stuff. This is like uh, special in, in in terms of weight. It's like a small and like because I didn't want to have like this big luggage. Yes, of course. I, of I plan course. to go a lot of off roading. Uh, and and sorry, which tools. tent you have? I have a MSR. Huba Huba XL, X, X, X something. And with all this your journey you have nothing problem? No. Okay, because uh, this is really good advice for adventure yes. because I also have like an hour, seven tent, you mm -hmm. know, and I also like you say, I have first m too much heavy and uh, too much big. Now I have two kilos, really, really mm -hmm. uh, little and beautiful. And it's really good. This helped many travelers to looking. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, he's sleeping with uh, many times. This is good question. Uh, you sleeping with tent with your journey? Yeah, a lot of times. A lot Actually, of times. Yes. Where been the best your place with tent with best view i think uh, this was in the himalayas in india mm -hmm. this was an epic epic view and it was like a little bit it was i think it was above 2000 meters mm. so it was not that hot because in india at that time it was pretty hot it was like 45 degrees and like the mountains and like the sun sundown and the sunrise was epic Epic. And I, I <laughs> like on this side in the bags, this is just the camping stuff. There is everything like tent, uh -huh. and, uh, like a, a tarp for underneath the tent, sleeping bag, sleeping mattress. And I most of the time I just use the inner tent. So I have like just a mosquito net. Yes, so you of can course. see the sky and all this. That stuff. must be it's fantastic, perfect. unbelievable. Yeah. And you never forget for this. No, there's a lot of lot of very good places. For this, we travel is we doing <laughs> this because this is the life, this is the our time and this is the uh, experiences when we have it. And when you can uh, see his legendary motorcycle, he going 
for one like a one year road with like a nothing when i saw this too much guys with everything yeah. you know too much and going for croatia you know with yeah. highway with uh, cruise control this is you are really <laughs> really a motivation for many many uh motorcycle riders and you can see now his motorcycle you can go really everywhere with not too much stuff uh you have something um uh, something important for you what uh, really uh, uh, you, you you're traveling only with this i would say my chair your chair <laughs> it's really important yeah it's and before i started i was thinking about not taking it with me but uh, at the end it was the best decision to take it with me because it's like a, it's very small it's I have also yeah, yeah. and, I and this thing like in the sand everywhere it was just uh, perfect because sitting on the floor in a lot of places would wouldn't be that nice yes <laughs> yes yeah. uh, best advice of the day chair is really important yes. i also <laughs> signature this this <laughs> okay uh uh I know with traveling in motorcycle is not only wind in the hair and beautiful mountains also sometimes doing uh, some things happen with motorcycle now is a topic about your motorcycle because it's important because this motorcycle be like a, your icon yeah. for forever <laughs> and it's unbelievable magical legendary uh, machine and um, but sometimes in a road and also off-road sometimes beds happen Yes. And uh, I know sometimes you have problem. Can you explain uh, what's happened in your road or uh, with the mini problems to some huge problem? What are you yeah. most fixing and doing? Uh, like the small problems, I think they started somewhere in Iran like smaller stuff i one time i had like the rear brake uh when mm -hmm. this one comes out of the final drive yeah there's like an o-ring and this one like just uh, gave up and so yep. there was oil inside oil mm -hmm. leaking small problem yeah and there you have everywhere like workshops they fix everything they have everything for you i had this problem then um this were like smaller problems, like smaller electric, like you can see here still. It's yeah. a little bit uh, <laughs> yeah. Frankenstein. There was like the start button, this push button just like didn't work anymore. Yeah. And I get this changed in Oman. They just had it there right away. In Oman? In Oman, yes. <laughs> well. um, oh, it's hard. A lot of small. And, and this windshield. Ah, yeah, this, the windshield. I cracked this one in uh, Cyprus when I dropped it down a small road when I was riding a single trail. Um, then I cracked my front rim when I, when, uh, I was driving the Palmy Highway. Nicht dein Ernst! Georg! Ah, meine Füße! Eins, zwei, drei! Jetzt ist alles los. Yes! Endlich habe ich dieses River Crossing Thema abgeschlossen! Ah. Uh, together with my cousin. And the problem there was, we, we've been together. And if you drive together off-road, you're pushing the limits. Yes, of course. And we And like, be a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun, but the bike had a hard time. <laughs> yeah. uh, this was not, not easy for a bike because yeah. the roads were horrible uh, uh, sometimes. And I just like, uh, you know, I just raped it full <laughs> Yeah. And then the front wheel cracked in the middle. This was not good. So mm -hmm. I fixed it with some zip ties and it worked for like six, 700 kilometers. And then I got a new one, like, uh, from a cheap bike from Russia, they sent it over. Uh, we changed it, but it was like steel and not made for this weight. Mm -hmm. So it gets like, like it, it didn't break, but it was like bent everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, in, in Tajikistan, no, in, in Kyrgyzstan, I ordered uh, from Germany. It was the 
one and only time I ordered parts from Germany. It was this this front wheel. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, how long are you waiting for? Part? Twenty days. Twenty days. Oh, this was DHL. They it was like priority um, package stuff, but they like it was like days it was like uh, seven days in Frankfurt, Germany, at the airport. No movement. Stayed there. What they doing? Days. I don't know. <laughs> and yes, this was uh, not nice. I also the the main the main reason was the drive shaft because I yeah. broke the drive shaft. Actually, two times. <laughs> oh well, well. <laughs> and uh, I changed that. And uh, this was like the the biggest problem was actually the drive shaft. But even though it was like easy to fix because it's like everything is easy yeah. accessible. And the second big um, major problem I had was a Nepal. Mm -hmm. This was my cylinder heads. The intake valves went into the head because uh, they went, uh, before I started, I did like a complete rebuild on the spike. <coughs> and they, I sent them away to a specialist yeah. and they rebuilt the cylinder heads, but they used the wrong material. So the the valve seedings and the valves they didn't match up. Okay. And then there was a big problem. But I got it fixed in Nepal for like 70 euros. <laughs> oh, bravo! And it's like it's now there there Tata valves in it. When you have problem, go to Nepal and everything you not pay a no, lot. In this in this countries they fix everything for cheap. You know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know you can now listen. Uh, all stuffs can make happen, and also in your road. But you know, Vincent have a problem. He fix everything, yeah. and and when something happen somewhere, uh, people help you. Yeah, everywhere. Like in these countries, first of all, they fix everything. Like they drive the old, like German cars or Indian cars. Yeah. For hundred thousand of kilometers, yeah. like in the in the baddest roads, and they fix everything. They have everything. For example, I just forgot about this. You see this one? Yeah. This is not original. Okay. This is welded on top. In uh, this was in Laos mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. my swing arm broke. Okay. Eh, there was okay. like a small a small crack in it, and the swing arm is filled with oil because yeah. the the, yeah, fire, yeah, uh, the, yeah. like the dry shaft is uh, lubricated with oil there was like a small oil leakage i thought it was from the from the shock absorber mm -hmm. but it turns out it was like a crack in like on the tube there so i welded it back together and strengthened it with like a, it's from a motorbike like yeah, the, the yeah. rear uh, how do you say i don't know like this one what is this called in english I don't know. Big <laughs> ring. Yeah. Big ring. Big ring with teeth. <laughs> yes, ex exactly. So I cut it like in four yes. four parts and then I welded together and still works. It's still unbelievable, the Vincent. <laughs> I really like when you're talking how he said this with this country, with this place. Yeah. And this is this part. Uh, how uh, you fix this problem is really epic Re really yeah. really epic. I mean if you if you do a travel like this and especially if you do that much off-road uh it will ha something will happen something yes, will break even if you take a new bike or an old bike of course this is damaging off road yeah. is also damaging that's uh, and that's the point and, and they will fix everything you don't need to worry about this <laughs> this is advice for you traveling traveling don't worry because with these countries like vincent said they have not uh, new parts but they have old everything and he fixing everything yeah. don't worry when something has happened on your your bike uh you they find help the you. help yeah yes. they help you okay uh and um, what i want to say sorry yes of course of course <laughs> uh the best memories are like one of the the interesting moments are the moments where you have a problem because then the situation starts to get very nice and funny and you meet so many people yes 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 And like the same thing happened on, on like the other side. Yeah. I crashed in Turkey. Yeah. There was oil on the street. I crashed the bike and this one broke completely. Mm -hmm. And I went to the next small village and there was a guy. And you know, welding aluminium is not that easy. Like in Germany, I, I know if I went to a workshop in Germany, everybody would say, no, it's not possible. We can't do because <laughs> yeah. it's a different material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You know? Also in Slovakia, in Czechia, yeah. yeah. So I went to Turkey to that guy and he was like, yeah, no problem. He took his uh, metal burning 
Yeah. The device took like an old aluminium rim from a car, cut it out a piece and welded it in. <laughs> and it's still on there. And it's still working. Yeah. <laughs> so, here bin ich am reparieren. You know? So they just do it, you know? It's not this is the adventure, yeah, this is the exactly. life. <laughs> oh, bravo. And uh, not uh, anyone can afford to go such a journey like uh, you have in this li um, young age, no little age, young yes. age, because because money of course we, yeah. we have everyone traveler knows how much cost traveling is a lot of money but do we love and that's what it is yes. how how are you doing you uh my question is uh with 26 years old going for one year and and this yes you have 10 but it's still expensive uh, it's yeah. still it's <laughs> super expensive this is not going for air or water you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you have sponsoring or your fa family support you or how are you doing this uh, actually no support so far um, I I saved some money f uh, for my own so um, actually I was uh, working uh, before I started, I was working in Switzerland. Okay. And this is like uh, compared to Germany, you have like uh, higher loans. Yeah, I know. And yeah, uh, yeah this uh, made it possible for me to save uh, good money. Okay. And, and how, how how long are you save saving this money? Uh, almost three years. Three years you making a money for one place and then say. I yeah. go to journey. Yeah, yeah. And it's really great because many, many, many these travelers or people uh, thinking about this situation mm -hmm. and uh, money is the first thing what you need it to starting. But but uh, Vincent is, is best uh, explain when you wanted something you you can uh, find a way how make it uh, possible. Of course, and this and then what it's also important is uh, <laughs> there's the cat coming. <laughs> Uh, same was uh, also I I experienced oh <laughs> no 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 oh <laughs> close one <laughs> this is the cat coming here yeah <laughs> uh, you I, I say you this is be legendary in yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't need all the gear like if you if you yeah. open up YouTube and and you watch for like adventure traveling same. with a bike same. they all have all like the the best gear and and the nicest stuff and yeah. you don't need much that's that's uh, first point and I also meet people they just started with like an old shitty bike and just go for it because you don't yeah. need an like in GS like and and sorry you don't need uh, it. what do you study oh, okay, like your legendary bike <laughs> but what do you study um, I'm industrial mechanic yeah okay but when something broken you you have uh, potentially you not know what's happened or how fix it or yeah i know i'm i built this bike by myself so i know every screw okay <laughs> so, okay yeah. how long uh, you build this bike uh two years okay because and, uh, also it was like a money thing yes to, like, of course save money build save build <laughs> yes of course that's unbelievable story that's uh, okay yeah. that's but this is uh, also like for me because i'm kind of a mechanic enthusiast and i'm really like like the old stuff yeah I'm really into that and for me it was like it was not just a journey it was also about the bike yes of course like, and that's what what I wanted to say like not not many people are about like they're crazy about bikes so just take the cheapest one and go if there something will break they will fix everything this yeah. is no problem you can buy a bike for 500 euros and go for it yes Easy. of course this I saying also I'm really happy Vincent you say this because I with another uh, videos give subscribe uh, saying also this you not must have uh, the the m most modern and new bike on the planet just it's better it's if old because if it's old because they can fix it if you have a lot of electronics they they, they won't fix it yes yeah. of course when you buying like he said this is the most true what uh, in this interview uh, we talking because when you have uh, all newest gs and in albania in the mountain somewhere broken electronics this uh, guy with ships uh, they not uh, help you but when you have all the he say okay uh, take me in beer and with five minutes you go away exactly exactly That's true, yeah. and now we're coming with your journey 
okay. this being a motorcycle because I really wanted to say uh, above your motorcycle because this is something unbelievable to be one meter with this bike because for me I, I also uh, my heart jumping when I saw a machine to do, do this uh, big journey and it's really important to say have this motorcycle name no 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 really you know I, I don't like it to give names to like vehicles okay <laughs> <Actually>. really yeah <laughs> this motorcycle heaven this is your motorcycle this is my bmw yeah. <laughs> that's all <laughs> uh, that's all okay uh <laughs> what was the highest point uh in your motorcycle uh 4600 meters and where been this was in tajikistan uh, the last point shortly before the kyrgyzstan border this is like uh, the last uh, mountain you cross and okay. we camped up there is like a lake it's beautiful okay uh, it's and, awesome and Wonderful view view, view. view it's <laughs> perfect i can send you some pictures it's like you see the mountains around like there are even higher mountains all around you can see like snow and it must perfect. be unbelievable yeah it's very nice thank you very much uh, uh what was the uh coldest place or coldest uh temperature on your road Plus it minus. was uh, yeah, it was in Turkey um, because uh, I spent New Year in Georgia with uh, my brothers and my girlfriend. They visit me, and because of that, I was a little bit late. And winter starts to coming, and I was going back from Georgia through Turkey to Iran, and I had to cross a few mountains, and there were a lot of snow. So I was riding in snow, and you're sleeping in the tent. Yes. <laughs> and uh, w how much temperature? It was the, the coldest was by was minus two uh, at night once I was in the tent. And but uh, I need to say I didn't slept all the nights in the tent. Yes, of, of, course. Course. of course. It was like one night was minus two and the other was in in Georgia. It was like zero something like that. And uh, how how you feel in the tent? My was, record is minus three, and oh, okay. but I I uh, have a really great this pylon, and yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what with English this Me word. Me too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sleeping of course. Bag, yeah. Sleeping bag, but I have prepare for this night. Yeah, yeah. Bit another, but you you prepare, you can't prepare for every situation. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Actually, I also have like a good sleeping bag, which is like comfort is like minus three, I think. But okay. Then you freeze. But, but re in reality, in minus three, you've been yeah. cold. Yeah. But I had like a dawn jacket and also like an inner, a separate inner uh, sleeping bag, which is like polyester kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was not comfortable, but I wasn't freezing too much. Okay. <laughs> it was okay. And and we go with another side. Yeah. And what would be the warmest point of your journey? Uh, the warmest was 45 degrees actually. Yeah. Where? It was in uh, Nepal. Uh, border to India, also mm -hmm. in India. It is, uh, there were like a few days where I was driving down not in the mountains where it was really hot and then i went up in the himalayas then it was okay Bravo. but there was crazy and i give you now really really hard uh, question uh the most beautiful sunset where been Whew. i know you must uh, <laughs> many sunset see but where oh that's that's really hard i yeah. think it was uh, really much in the beginning in croatia i think i was up uh, um i think it was a lake and there was like kind of a viewpoint and i drove all the way up it was like a single trail oh, okay and this was very epic because uh yeah the light and everything mm -hmm. was like the most intense i think and uh i think i i i, I asking in a home this but where been the best place with tent uh, but you s uh, say himalaya yeah, yeah Himalayan, i think yeah and it was also like coming out of the heat yeah and all this together i think if you ask me this question i just have one picture in mind and this was uh, up there in the mountains and i think it was just because of all of this coming together the views yeah the, the climate because it was like perfect weather i can yeah. use my sleeping bag again and yeah. not lying there and sweating just doing must nothing must be unbelievable <laughs> yes. must be it unbelievable yeah. miracle and and you also when you've been in these mountains and saw these views you also have a time for you to sitting and only uh, of looking, course <laughs> and enjoying the moment yeah, of course because i i'm 
I, I didn't plan like being there and there at this time and yeah. just go for it and see how it works out. So there were moments where I thought, oh man, it's beautiful here. And then I stopped and there were days where I just uh, stayed there and then so and enjoyed the, the view or the scenery. Yeah, so. thank you very much because <laughs> this is really imp important when you want it starting with travel. Air. Tra travel many many travelers making a point and going directly you know yeah. and i not uh, traveling like this when i saw something beautiful i going uh, and uh, and i not uh, speeding the time and is really important you enjoying the moment enjoying the riding enjoying the country people everything because about about this is the traveling yes uh, you can't uh, you can't plan this it's, yes of course it's in it's uh, not possible yeah otherwise you miss the the best part <laughs> oh. where we are the nicest people kind of uh, I think in Iran but actually it's hard to say because everywhere the people were so friendly and uh, welcoming me everywhere I get so many invitations for food or like for staying the night uh, at their house but I think Iran was like top of it because it is unbelievable what's going on there. People are so friendly, they're so happy to see tourists because it's uh, really not common to uh, have travelers from other countries because uh, yeah, the political situation is kind of uh, sketchy, I would say. And also like the German government says, don't go there, it's dangerous and they can't help you if yeah. there's some problems. But um, this is like, you need to separate. It's like the political stuff and, and people. the people and this is in the most most countries like for example Afghanistan is like also like a country where everybody says wow oh, crazy you can't go there it's dangerous and stuff but uh, well the Taliban is the one side but the other side are people uh, yeah, yeah and, and most of them are like all I met they're so helpful and friendly and, and yeah that's great it's unbelievable yes, yeah, This is fun. <laughs> but I would say in, in like for like uh, the overview of one year Iran was uh, crazy. It was I, I gained so many weight because I need to I had to eat so much and they had so good food. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I couldn't stop eating because it was so good. And, and they always have food everywhere. And also about woman, yeah. It's not actually like I've been many years before. Uh, now it's not all hiding like yeah, you say. No. It's I was actually actually uh, uh, really surprised because uh, I was expecting the women to wear like like uh, covering their hair like everything you you see or hear in the media but there's a lot uh, going on like a lot of uh, women they don't want to uh, accept this anymore and so you see actually a lot of uh, women without the hijab yeah. and also you can talk to them and once I was a uh, with them, like uh, with the families, they invite me. All women, they didn't uh, wear yeah. anything, and they're really like, actually, really modern, and also very educated. Like they really know what's going on in the world. And mm -hmm. I was really surprised about uh, Iran. This is gr gr really yeah. great uh, information because we talking also in my home about this uh, Iran, and I say Vincent yes, but this is the this poly uh, this regular uh, cops is there, and he say, but it's too much woman to have on nothing, and this is not too much cap to uh, catching yeah, everyone. It's like or a protesting. Protesting, go Iran woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really great. These people, yeah, but the system is really, really bad. Yeah. Thank you very much because uh, I hope you in the future saying about these old countries and everything. But this is really, really inspiration and and this information is really important for all us. Thank you very much, Vincent. And uh, also, I'm saying in this chair, uh, saying uh, sitting my my uh, big hero and my my friend. I love Igor Brezovar, and he go also with BMW around the world and saying also this. 
best people on the planet he ma make in Iran and now is the true uh, hi Igor <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much also yeah, but, but it's really hard to say because everywhere you find good people in Oman it was the same but like not to say no it was the same I met so many people and, and also making friends there and but it's I, the, I think the difference is that the people in Iran they're suffering way more because they get so restricted from the government they don't have any money or like not a lot of money but and also information I have uh, actually information about another countries or Europe or no yeah is possible internet is there is there they use VPN to access like Instagram and stuff okay. so they as I said they're really educated and they really know what's going on but uh, for them it's really hard to to they they're really educated but they can't work in their profession because there are no jobs because yeah like all the sanctions the the country is really like the government makes the country poor mm. and in oman like the people it's the same they're so friendly and 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 gi they're giving me so much mm -hmm. but the people are rich yeah, yeah you know I the understand. people have money and they're like more european like free you know mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now we thank you very much you say uh, we're being really nice people and yes yeah, we know with every when you're traveling you meet everywhere good people and yes. also making uh, is possible also bad but this is the world but but uh, when we talking with with Slovakia or Czechoslovakia, uh, people with lemon eyes, a lemon smile is, you know, ah, let me, yeah. a lemon smile like uh, you eat a lemon. Uh, this is the uh, nicest people. Where been you thinking is not too much friendly or you haven't these hurtful things in your um, world? That's a good question. I think it was in uh, Southeast Asia. It was like in Thailand and Laos, but not because the people are not friendly, but uh, I think because the people are used to the tourism. So yeah, yeah, understand. So for them, there's nothing special, so they won't come to you and ask you, hey, yeah. you need help in something. So they're like more, there's more distance. It's really hard to connect to the people and, and get a feeling of the culture and mm -hmm. stuff like uh, compared to other countries. Yeah, understand. And what, this is, uh, I, I think I know your answer, but where was the craziest traffic? Oh. That's good. Um, <laughs> All Asia is crazy, but I think uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. I think uh, that's uh, India. No India. Uh, India also, but Afghanistan was uh, really. Let me think about it. <laughs> that's really, that's a tough question because yeah. it starts in, in in Iran. Like in Iran, there's only one rule, and this rule says there are no rules. <laughs> yes, of <laughs> so course. So you can do everything, and you, yeah. there's everything in the traffic. Well, and like well, I was in India just like a few days because yeah. I really. Yeah, it was too hot and uh, yeah, I, I didn't uh, went to the big cities, so I yeah, really yes, can't. Yeah, of course, of course. But uh, it was like on the same level, I would say like Iran, but Afghanistan was... Uh, Hardcore. Yeah, because there is like not only cars and bikes and, and, and bi uh, like bicycles. Animals. And there's animals, there's <laughs> everything, every corner. There's something new, <laughs> and I, I I haven't this um, I don't know this uh, war, word uh, in English, but they've been uh, not blinking in the light, but toot toot. Yeah, horns. Uh, yeah, horns. using horns. Yeah, using horns. This horns was everyone in, in Pakistan. Yeah, I think Pakistan and India was like uh, where this horn thing starts. Like in in Iran, it was not that common. But in, in Pakistan, it was like, the more you use the horn, the more the people will let you through. So uh, I really <laughs> penetrated my horn. <laughs> okay. And it really works. Like you, you go for this and they just... You, you also through. learn how to survive with this, of course, the, of this traffic crazy. Uh, thank you very much. And guys, now give subscribes because I giving, uh, this is the, uh, I give him questions for us our men's uh, <laughs> where were the most beautiful women in your all these countries uh, i really can't tell because i have a girlfriend so for me there there are no other women you know yes of course <laughs> this we understand but you know you have eyes where you think being a uh, nice girls uh that's a good question uh, uh, so, sorry girlfriend that is <laughs> that is normal question we really need uh we need that information <laughs> hey, we need this so it's hard to say because uh most of the times i've been to islamic countries where the the women 
like are covered. Yeah. So, um, but actually, I would say the last days when I uh, crossed Romania, I was uh, surprised. <laughs> I would say <laughs> in Romania or yeah. Bulgaria. Uh, sorry, Bulgaria. Bul 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 Bulgaria, Bulgaria, yes. you know, but you also know, Romania, also, oh, also yeah. Romania, yeah. but Bulgaria more. <laughs> I've been also there and making, <laughs> uh, you know, traveling. That you subscribe, you see. <laughs> How beautiful country and majestic and historical is but yes i must signature this uh, woman is really beautiful and we're not saying about your youngs also also all also i i, I, I yeah, <laughs> yes when when we i riding and i saw this uh you know how can i explain in the mountains this old have sheep mm -hmm. and it's really beautiful to talk, talking mm -hmm. with these poor people have really big big heads it's, yeah, it's really kind really also. Yeah, and when we are there in this point in the Balkan, uh, is really Balkan too much dangerous? Kill you, everyone? Or no, I don't understand this. Uh, like everybody, once I like before I started my my journey, I, I did like a Balkan tour with a few friends of mine, mm -hmm. and also there were people that were like, "What? You go to Bosnia and like to to Kosovo? It's dangerous." And man, the people are so friendly there. Uh, I think uh, a lot of German people should uh, should uh, take an how do you say example mm, yeah. <laughs> how to treat other people because uh, it's unbelievable they're so friendly and so kind yeah yeah it's bullshit because um, many 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 peoples and also in Czechoslovakia Europe have this about Balkan this story how dangerous no really we can we can't uh, guarantee you n nothing happen but it, with all world can something happen but we guarantee you with 99.9 percent you meet only good people and nothing's happen you know is not balkan is not uh, most dangerous place in the in the world don't worry travel travel balkan, it's beautiful there balkan is beautiful yes. and, and everyone can uh, find um, what do he love? Culture, food, people, nature. nature, big heart, sea, everything is there. Travel, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you very much. This helped many people and you you are really also my big inspiration. Uh, also, I'm saying uh, Vincent is, you know, he have starting with 26 years old and he not going on the highways. He off-roading, he adventure, he enjoying this journey, he talking with people, he eating, you know, that's, that's for me is adventure. This is the traveler for me. For me, it's not traveling, buying new motorcycle, one year waiting and going to highways with cruise control. This is for me nothing. And, and when only going with and n he have nothing to say about this country, traveler is when he enjoying this. Thank you very much for all information. Okay. What was the most special special thing you eat food and how taste <laughs> and where it was in Laos uh, I, I got invited and so it was uh, not possible to say no because I was a little bit scared yeah. or like not scared I was like I thought it's maybe a little bit disgusting it was kind of a it's like a bee but a little bit bigger really yes like, like so, a hornet like a hornet but not like it was like not yellow it was black i don't know exactly because they didn't speak english and yes of course they had like a, a whole like it was like a big pot full of it so i tried it and, and actually, how tasted it tasted just like a salted uh, chip like it was not special really? it was not disgusting but like the to seeing what it is and eating it this was like <laughs> which makes me a little bit uh, disgusting but 
but uh, yeah, it was was okay. This is the adventure. This <laughs> you just is the need adventure. to try it, you know. Yeah, traveling is also about trying things. When yeah. you when you're going for end of the world, you must try and go out here. Especially food. It's really important to is try the food in the countries because it's delicious. Even though sometimes you don't know what it is, but just go for it. And <laughs> I, like, I didn't try any food. I just think about it, but. There was never food which I didn't like. It was always crazy good. Mm -hmm. And is a big difference between um, kitchen or food in these countries? Um, not really, actually. Like, it it uh, changes slow. So once you travel by land, all the countries, like especially um, like the like the um, like Oman, yeah. Emirates, and stuff, they have almost the same, but like variation of this like variation small, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and then the, the the biggest cut was from uh from dubai to uh thailand but then uh thailand laos it's like there's some difference but like almost the same from the like you you know like the yeah. the, the main main food is almost like the same yeah but always very good mm. and then uh going to uh nepal also very good food mm -hmm. but then it was also changing slowly like uh, yeah and you India. like it every yeah. every every uh the i i put you a really uh, difficult question but i know this is the first his interview this is really <laughs> exclusive and uh, his journey and tomorrow you know i have this this first interview and i am really honored but this question i also taking this question every traveler and mm -hmm. with this day starting this question and end of your life you have this question non-stop and it's most hard because every republic i know have plus and minus mm -hmm. and everyone with day one now asking where been best which country be? yes 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 <laughs> i got this question a lot as you as you mentioned um i would say i would say oman Or Iran, <laughs> really? It's, uh, close, close. And one. and what been great? We we know the people, but mm -hmm. also uh, you like a church or or, or, or monuments or uh, nature or yeah, uh, like in Oman, it was the nature because uh, on one hand you have like desert. like the heat and stuff but on the other hand you have the mountains uh, they're beautiful you have like waterfalls you have like green areas it's like yeah you have, you have the sea you have yeah. the coast like sand uh, beaches and uh, it's not that touristic which I really like and also they have like a lot of very old ancient cities mm -hmm. like built out of uh, how do you say like a uh, mud yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. with mud yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. with mud i but, understand a uh, yeah. lot of lot of old stuff which is very nice to visit historically historically yeah. also like yeah as you mentioned the people are crazy i i met there a lot of very nice people and they invited me we went shooting with like a sniper <laughs> and went with a quad in the dunes and
like all kind of stuff you won't imagine. And like they they didn't know me. They just invited me. I stayed there for one week. Yeah. And they they showed me around. They and like imagine I I at one point I was like okay no when you go eating I I will pay. No way. No no it's way. It's like it's for them. It's like like you you would like um you are a guest and he yeah, is, yeah. for yeah. them for them number one is to to making your life perfect giving you everything you need and it's crazy they let That's me stay in their home and it was a very nice experience and yeah oman i i think i will go there in the future of yeah. course for holidays for this you must traveling when you meeting <coughs> in your road you also not only rich people meet also, yeah, also, poor, people, also poor people and also poor people give you they give kind. everything yeah no, they have nothing <laughs> they have really nothing crazy. and also give you something for, for one example when i was ordering my front rim yeah. in the uh, pamir highway this was in koruk in uh, tajikistan a small village and they don't have bikes there they don't have is they drive car they don't even understand why you go with a bike you know? <laughs> so uh, I was uh, organizing from the next bigger village I yeah. contacted a motorbike store and he gave me a number from a guy who was living in Kuruk and this guy came to me he was like oh what's the problem he was speaking English very good yeah like a young guy like yeah. my age maybe a little bit older I don't know and he was first thing was like yeah okay let me check and translate and he was like organizing where to buy something like that or send it the end of the story was that we ordered one from russia and then he was like okay let's go you come to my home uh, we make some dinner for you and mm -hmm. uh, you have to eat i was together with my cousin and then there was a problem the guy in the bigger city who was ordering the the part uh, he wanted first the money before he won he gets the Take thing apart, ordered, yeah, yeah. But the problem was with my bank system, I couldn't send him money. It was wasn't possible because I use some. I have different apps and different bank systems. Yeah. But uh, the Tajikis uh, currency wasn't supported. Yeah. So this guy was like, "Oh, no problem. I will pay it." And I was like, "Oh, that, but that's a lot of money." And bef because before we was talking about money, and he was like, "Yeah, he will. He's." Is getting what like 100 euros per month oh okay 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 oh, no, even less so the and price of the rim would be like three times like three months salary yeah i, I understand and, and he, he paid, paid he paid like for nothing and he was like oh uh, tomorrow i will go for three days holiday up uh, in the yeah. mountains with my family uh, once i come back you can give me money no problem and he and just went off and he believed he paid Vincent. He yeah. didn't. He didn't know me. He he not know him, and, and, and he believed yeah, this. It's, it's and crazy. he paid crazy. This is this been unbelievable story. Thank yeah. you very much to sharing uh, with us. And I have one question: uh, Did you feel unsafe in some country? If so, we, uh, if so, which one country? I never felt like uh, unsafe because, like, or I didn't were like scared of someone taking stuff from me or something like that little question still some some things no nowhere <laughs> one like a one year how much kilometers how much countries nobody steal him nothing and Travel. everywhere I park my bike like this helmet with the camera key I never put the key from the bike never because like I get used to it once I was in Iran yeah because the worst thing could happen in Iran is you come back to your bike and there's like a, a bag hanging with fruits or there's a bottle of water or there are people waiting and giving you stuff <laughs> yeah. it's understand what he <laughs> now saying uh, you you thinking uh, you going there and they kill you or steal you or i don't know what and uh, they give him give him he uh, a fruit or water yeah. and still nothing with iran iraq tajikistan and i don't know no. because in media we listen how dangerous yeah. is and uh, we can uh, go there and you are uh, explain how how is another right yeah. now is kind the yeah. only i think the only country where i was like and I, I was not was feeling unsafe but i was like kind of um uh not like how you say you've uh, been in the oh or you've been a little a little you know in stress careful careful I, I was careful, careful. Eh? this was india because the people were very there no distance they just came and they touch everything they go to the bike they touch everything they put really like everything and i was like whoa stop it yeah yeah <laughs> please and i have a problem with my side stand it's like a little bit bent so there is a way to to park the bike and if you i need to put it in gear 
so it stands against the gear. Yeah, and once you put, pull the clutch, it will just fall over. They come, pull the clutch, the bike tipped over. And, really? and, and they just come and they touch everything and open up. And I was and like... And you say, hey, yeah, well, yeah. stop it. Stop and, and this it. was the only, only country and, and like everywhere. The people were like, and always asking, how much is the bike worth? How much yeah. is the helmet worth? Yeah. How much cost the camera? How much do you earn? And this always makes me a little bit suspicious. And I was like, okay, maybe I should be a little bit more careful. This was, but it was even there. Yeah, but only this in is India. Like, I think the, the Indian people are like a little bit different. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That How much days have you been in, in India? I think uh, one and a half weeks, not too long. Oh, okay, okay. I just uh, transit from um, Nepal to Pakistan. Okay. And because I was uh, about to meet with my cousin, uh, I didn't have too much time and I Actually, I really want, didn't want to go to India, actually, because I don't know why, but India is not a country for, you. for yeah. me. Yeah. And it's, it's exactly the, how Curious. I thought it is. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. like this. So a lot of trash, the people are very, no, no distance, it's very uh, uh, exhausting. They, yeah, schmutzig. <laughs> Dirty. Dirty. But it's really, really exhausting because they come like very close every time and they and touch everything. And you feel not and, good. Yeah, you, you're not feeling comfortable, so... Yeah. Uh, Vincent, uh, I, I too much time say you uh, thank you in this uh, interview. Legendary. <laughs> thank you for the beer. <laughs> yes, of course. I have for him <laughs> 10 beers more. But and also Raki, I coming from Bulgaria. Oh, oh this night be real, really oh, good. <laughs> but then bringing your money into the country. Mm -hmm. Ah, Qatar. This is Qatar money stands. Mm -hmm. Also very, I think. Beautiful, really beautiful. Really beautiful. And Raki, I've been great. Hey. Because but I must say another. Uh, I am really happy you say something because when I doing these videos, uh, I wanted also send little little uh, hiding message yeah. every time. And I love nature. I know also you because traveler love nature. But like you say, every been trash there. And please, I have on this question this, but say in the world how. Uh, is uh, how looks really bad when people not caring uh, about nature and how where been too much trash and dirty and how is important cleaning and saving and stay uh, stay nature in 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 clear uh, condition and good condition yeah it's i think it's uh, really important it starts in turkey but it was really bad like also in the balkans you see like uh, the small villages they put the trash in the in the woods or light it up, yeah. and which is not nice. But uh, in Turkey it was crazy because they have a lot of picnic areas because it's like very common in Turkey that they at the weekends or after work they they meet with the family and they go outside barbecue and in the nature. But they they leave the trash and and w once they're gone it's like a big mess. And yeah. even though everywhere are the trash cans they don't use it. And I think it's it's a shame because uh, it's, it's not a shame. it's not hard to just put all the stuff in a plastic bag and throw it away or take it with you. And my the garbage, my, yeah. my thing is uh, always leave it better than you found it. Like uh, if there is some trash, I pick it up with my trash and I take it away because uh, you yeah. don't 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 do it. It's not nice. In Asia, mostly in Asia, this uh, trash. Uh, can you ex uh, imagination is in our Alps? must no. be catastrophic yeah, yeah. yeah it's really shame and please when you in nature and see uh, something trash cleaning and uh, not doing this we must care about nature of course Re really thank you and also the animals you see there are a lot of goats and, and sheep and or even dogs they, they eat like the, the plastic shit and then they they die because yeah because eating this and yes. he solved this you know he not only talking he traveling and when uh, you're not believing jumping in motorcycle and go prove it <laughs> yeah thank you very much it's important to, to care this nature thank you this is really important also for me uh thank you very much mm -hmm.